Hey guys, I'm Roger Wakefield, lead APD expert plumber, coming to you live. You gotta love that. We are live on YouTube. We're also live on Facebook. So I appreciate everybody being here. If this is your first time here and you're catching this on a replay, you may want to go ahead and watch this video because we have people in here that are getting in the trades that are wanting to get better at the trades that want to start their own company and people that literally or already have their own company and want to learn to use social media. So we have all kinds of different people in here and love doing what we do. But if you're here live, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. I see we've got a bunch of people in here. We've already got a bunch of comments. I'm going to scroll through them. We also have a link up in here. If you have questions, we ask that you go over to the forum up top. It's over in Google Documents. What that will do, that will give you a place to go in, put your question in, and I'll start going through the form here in a little bit and answering questions there. But this is fantastic. And come on, man. I wasn't late. Got Mr. Steve Harloa in here. Good to see you in here as always, brother. Going to have to miss today's live stream. Have too many calls and almost three days behind. I know how that feels. Much love and aloha to everyone. Have a beautiful day. We will. Man, lots of folks in here. Is anybody in here a big, strong plumber? Uh, well, there's probably a few of them in here. Here we go. That's it. Uh, Virgil Hatfield's in the house. Good to have you in here. JFK was AFK271. How we doing? Kevin Mouton Torres. What's up? Mediocre Mac, love you and your mustache. Man, that's a great way to start off the show. Flores, what's up with you? This wide gaming. Access to the forum is right there. And I think, yeah, chatbot should know. Maybe not. Chatbot may, may already have it. I'm not sure. But there's a link. I will leave that up there here for just a moment and see who else, who else is in here. Stan Chubik's in the house tonight. Good to have you. Evan White, small week plumber. I love, yeah, we all are at some point. Kush Mull, how's your day? Man, my, my day's been great, running like crazy. Uh, I like this. Kevin, Kevin Mutu. Matundan Torres says, uh, hello from Puerto Rico. Everybody who's in here, drop in, drop in a chat real quick and tell me where you're at uh, and where are you at in the trades? Are you a plumber? Are you a, a, an apprentice? Are you a tradesman? Are you a journeyman? Are you a master? What are you and what do you do? Uh, just curious here. I'm going to set some of this stuff over out of the way so I can get my little remote controls down here a little bit closer to me. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, Kevin, great idea, though. Every, everybody put down in the chat, please, where you're at, where you're from, what you're doing, what you're working on. And we will see what we got going on. Uh, again, if you have any questions, jump over to the chat. There's the link for it right there. And I don't know if it will let me. I can't do it from here. If somebody can pin that up to the top, that would be great. Already, already pinned. Beautiful. So we've got a comment. If you're on YouTube, go to the comments up at the top. The link is pinned. If you're not on YouTube, you may want to jump over to YouTube, search Roger Wakefield, search plumbing, search whatever you need to to find it, and you'll be good. And subscribe while you're there. I love it. My head is wide gaming. How are we doing today? Evan Watt, I love that. Small, weak plumber. Day. Hello from Puerto Rico again. What is your opinion of Navian tankless water heater? I'll tell you what, Navian makes a good product. My biggest problem with tankless water heaters right now is the fact that, man, there's so many of them damaged that the manufacturers can't get parts quick enough. We have literally seen things posted that have said, look, it's going to be, you know, half a year before we get parts in stock. So it's kind of crazy. Nicholas Breacher says, Roger, I appreciate your wisdom for the basic homeowner like me. What is the most important tools to own? You know, and there's really a lot of them, but 
as a homeowner, to me, the most important would be a meter key. Can you get into your meter box? Can you turn it off? What can you do in case of an emergency? After that, a uh, slip joint pliers, uh, a, a slip joint adjustable wrench. Man, basic things like that so you can get in and fix most minor problems. That's a great thing. Sydney, how we doing? Hello, Miss Liz. Craziest plumbing experience, man. It's a long, long list. Uh, you know, I, I guess the, the craziest is probably, and I've got the video up, craziest plumbing job I've ever seen. And just to go in and see that probably wins. Yeah, Dallas is not a shark by heaven. And isn't that crazy? Uh, Thomas Burke, uh, it depends on what part of the world you're in. Depends on what kind of job you want. We're always looking for for journeyman plumbers. Every now and then, we're looking for apprentices to bring in, but always looking for journeymen. Thomas, Tom, Tomas Fury fan. Hello from Warsaw, Poland. Let me see somebody beat that one. That's pretty cool. Happy Happy Monday to you. Uh, here we go, Orlando. We got a plumber. So Thomas, yeah, yeah. And if you're a journeyman plumber, love to talk to you. Joseph Bros Tito, Joseph Bros Tito, how we doing from New York? For my nonstop taco boy, not the truth. Do you, do you need manuals, driver's license to be a plumber? You don't. You you don't need manuals. You probably need a a, a driver's license for most plumbing companies because you are going to be driving around a company truck. If you're a residential service company, definitely, because we have to go to people's houses. So a lot of a lot of things like that. Uh, England, apprentice electrical engineer. Didn't say good to have you in here. I, I love seeing stuff like that. Here's a good one. Super J from Kempner, Texas, RMP. Yeah, and that's a cool thing. Guys, whenever y'all ask questions in the chat, I don't always get around to that because I'm normally over answering questions from the forum, but I do love it in the beginning just to run through and say hello to everybody, see how everybody's doing. We've got some cool things we're going to be talking about later that we've got coming up. We are doing just a ton of stuff with Ferguson, as you see that they sponsor my, my Wednesday videos, but man, got a lot of stuff coming up with them. Got a lot of stuff to talk about, about meter dog. Y'all, hopefully y'all saw that product that we put out or, or put the video out of about a week, week and a half ago. I think that especially with everything going on in Texas right now, remote leak detection is huge and it could have saved people hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I really think that that's going to be great. Alex Roshan says he's in Canada still trying to be a helper. And I'm not sure how Canada's set up. I, I've got some friends down there. I say down there. Everything is down there. I've got some friends up there. And, you know, I know that you, you've got to get what the Red Seal or you're trying to get the Red Seal because that's your nice nationwide certification. Uh, I've actually reached out to the Justin Trudeau, the prime minister, about helping recruit into the trades because I do get a lot of plumbers that say that they just they, they need help and they can't get it. So I, I think that there's something that needs to be done in the trades to help people understand, look, Trades aren't hard to get in. And if you get in now and do things right, the opportunity is phenomenal in the future because there's such a need for the trades. And, and it's not just plumbing, guys. It's plumbing, electrical, HVAC, roofing. And, and I'm looking down the, the next two. Uh, I've got a, a roofer right here. Milan Johnson, how are we doing? A roofer in Florida. Then we have an HVAC technician in, in Las Vegas. So. The opportunity is out there in, in everybody. Okay, I've, I've got a roofer and HVAC tech right there. So so let me go back to uh, Milan and Matt. How are things where y'all are located? Are y'all looking for people in the trades? Because from what it looks like to me, there's not enough people getting in the trades. We need more help. I know we need it here in Texas. Every time I talk to plumbers from across the country, they pretty much say the same thing. There you go. Rally RMP, medical gas leak hunter. 
and I do a lot of that myself, Stan. I'm probably one of the few residential service company owners here in the North Central Texas area that's also I have my master med guest, my my master WSPS, my master multi-purpose residential. So I've got all that stuff. So I tend to get a lot of those calls. So man, I completely get it. You good, Mr. Virgil? Fantastic. Evan says Greensboro, North Coral, North Carolina, residential plumbing repair apprentice, one and a half years experience. Man, good for you. Good to have you in here. I like this here. Hello from Australia. Austriel, how are we doing? Air Fighters, Nine Films, good to see you in here. Hello from Liechtenstein. Man, we got a bunch of folks in here. Let me scroll back up. I just jumped. Up. There we go. A Plumber's Life. Journeyman Plumber, Western Michigan, taking master's exam on Friday. Man, good luck to you. Congratulations for putting in the time and everything it takes to get in the position where you need to do that. That's fantastic. Ah, sorry about that. I needed some cold water. <clears throat> Israel, I want to make sure I get this right. Israel Valda Benito, how are you? ING Plumbing Incorporated, Los Angeles, California. El Paso, you got to love it. Richie Reuter. Andrew Sluzer, Indiana Plumbing Service Tech with a big name company. Good for you. And Andrew, let me ask you this. Do you like working for the big name companies? I'm a small company. I've got four trucks running, but most of my big competition, uh, I was on the phone earlier with a guy who's got, I think, 87 trucks running in plumbing. He's got more in HVAC and, and different things, but, but, and I just, I'm just curious, Andrew, do you love working for a small company? I mean, a big company. I, I, I've enjoyed that in the past, but I also love working with, with smaller companies. Hello from Jordan. Good to have you in here. Roger, how many freeze breaks did you fix? There we go. Uh, Stan, man, I fixed a few, not a ton. Uh, we kept our guys going for a couple of days, but man, the, the numbers are actually slowing down a little bit. Are, are you still out fixing freeze breaks, Stan, or have you moved on from that? Here we go. Good question. Chillex Vibe. I started with a plumbing company. I had no experience and they put me in the shop. Any advice? I'm trying to become a master. You know, the, the problem is if you're really good in the shop, you'll get stuck there. I don't mean that bad. And there's may not be a way to get out of it. But but the thing is, you may want to talk to the company that you're working for and say, hey, look, I really, really want to learn plumbing and, and see what see what kind of opportunities are out there. They may, they may let you, they may not. Uh, Southern Maryland, a uh, retired electrician at Moonlights with mechanical systems. <clears throat> Moorhead, Kentucky, a logger. You know, the neat thing is, and, and Sydney Middleton, good to have you in here. The, the neat thing is we get all kinds of different tradespeople in here, not just plumbers. We, we get roofers, HVAC technicians, Loggers, landscapers, window cleaners, it, all kinds. Average scale play for average scale pay for service plumbing by you. Our plumbers, we, we've got it set up because we're a, since we're a smaller non-union residential service company. We used to be union, but you know the, the union just didn't do a lot of things for me that I needed done. So I, I cut my ties with the union. The cool thing about it is I, I still stay right in that same pay range. Pay range. I will bring pr apprentices in starting out at about $15 an hour, maybe lower if they just know nothing at all. But a first year apprentice at 15, second year with drain cleaners endorsement, utility installer, stuff like that at 20, a journeyman at 25, I mean a tradesman at 25, a journeyman at 30, a master at 35, and man, it's, it's worked out pretty good. David Phila, Beverly, Massachusetts owner, Phila Plumbing. We chatted at the airport after the Milwaukee Plumbing Convention. Man, I'll tell you what, that Milwaukee Convention was so good for me. I met some wonderful people through SGI, 
through PHCC. Uh, just so many people. It was fantastic. David, good to have you in here, brother. Pat G says, a, a New York journeyman, 1994, master's in 2000, knows Florida State license, uh, 2014, still need a new back. <laughs> Man, we all need a new back. If you've been doing this a long time, yeah, you, you need something. Uh, I'm going to stay over here in the the comments for just a couple of minutes. Then I'm going to jump over to the forum. We've already got a lot of questions over there. So I will say, guys, if you want to have your questions answered, please jump over in the forum, ask them there, and, and we will be getting over there. I just want to jump in here and say hello to anybody or hello to everybody. Uh, Matthew Floyd. Oh, for, first of all, right here, what, what kind of music do you like? Man, I love country music. But the funny thing is, now, whenever I drive in in the mornings, I normally don't listen to music. I listen to either what book I'm reading, motivational speakers, things like that. And since I've started doing that, let me tell you what, man, my production, my life, the things I do every day, everything has changed and, and it's definitely getting better. <clears throat> Matthew Floyd says, you have any opinions on the Noritz Easy Series tankless water heater heaters? Love the 25-year warranty and it being popped out of the top of the tank uh, for tank-style conversions. You know, I've installed one or two of those, and, and I got to tell you, I, I had no problems with them. I love the hookup, thought it was pretty easy. I think that there's, you know, that was an easy change out for either a 30 or 40-gallon gas water heater. I like it. It did good. But now, and I don't remember, I don't know how many are there in the EZ series, to be honest with you, Matthew. What I will tell you this is I have looked at the biggest thing for me now is maximum gallon per minute flow rate. And that's what I look at on anything because I hate to see people get into a situation where if somebody's in the shower, you can't run a load of clothes or if somebody's in the shower, you know, you don't want to run the dishwasher. And that's kind of what I've been seeing. So I'd have to check more into it, to be honest with you. Tyler Rance has started plumbing in Sarasota, Florida. New construction for seven years, did four years of plumbing school, just moved to Tennessee and started service work and loving it. Tyler, I got to tell you, look, I love service work. I think it's phenomenal. Uh actually got off the phone earlier with A.O. Smith. I think I'm going to end up going up to A.O. Smith and videoing how water heaters are made and different things like that. Get to go through their plant, do that tour. They've also got a training center there. Also, the other thing is going to end up going down to Charlotte Pipe and do the same type of video. How is pipe and fittings made? So kind of interesting. The soaking sponge says, what is the weirdest thing you saw in a toilet? Uh, dentures, uh, dentures and reading glasses are the two things that have just really been crazy to me. Parker, I guess you've got a question over in the forum, which is a great time to roll over in there. So let's start off guys. If you have any questions, please go over to the forum, put them in over there. Uh, looking forward to it. So, Damian Ruiz, who is not in the trade, says, how has your day been going? You know, the good thing is it's been going good. Uh, my normal Monday, I meet with Ferguson in the morning. We, we, we do a review. What happened on last week's video? What are we doing this week? What we're thinking? Any ideas, topics, stuff like that that we've got coming up in the future? future. So, did that. I had a couple of meetings with people about Meter Dog. And guys, if y'all have not checked out Meter Dog, you, you really need to. And I'm going to see. Let me grab my keyboard. Get my keyboard back just because I want to put a link in here. And I can actually do this. Check this out. I put a, a link into it in the chat. It should be coming here in just a moment. 
So, you know, y'all go check this thing out because when I talk about meter dog, I think this is probably the neatest, coolest thing coming to the plumbing industry. And it's funny because the person that I talked to earlier about this product, like I said, owns one of the biggest plumbing companies in the Dallas area. He's like, hey, I want to get my plumber started installing this, but I also want to show it to my electricians, HVAC techs, because they do all three. And they're like, this is an easy enough install. Any of these guys could do it. The neat thing is that they're, you don't have to cut into the line. It attaches to the meter. And the cool thing is, and think about this, those of y'all that are working at bigger companies, this is something that literally anybody could put in. The, the, an electrician or HVAC tech could install it, and then a plumber could come back later and cut a valve in if they want it to where it's tied into where you can shut it off. So I think that's neat. So that's how my day's been. It is fun. Next question in the forum. Here we go, Parker. Hey, Roger, what are some of the worst smells on calls you've ever experienced? Now, now that, that is a pretty good question. And I'll tell you what, there's, there's only been one time that I went to a job that the smell was so bad. It's like, I just, I couldn't handle it. And I mean, think about it. I'm a plumber, so I deal with this stuff all the time, but the job was so bad that literally I, I was walking in and these are apartments and, and they're like enclosed apartments. So it's like, you're walking down a hallway and there's doors on each side. And most of these doors were open. And it was summertime. I get to this house that we've got to call. There's a stopped up toilet. And I go in and, and literally looked at it. And the smell was so bad that, I mean, you, you knew what unit it was as soon as you walked in the door. The smell was so bad that I just started gagging. But here's why. I think it was the look. They literally, even though this toilet was stopped up, they had just kept on using it. And I mean, poop and toilet paper were were piled, mounded up in the toilet. And I just, I walked out. And this is back when I first started plumbing, really, uh, after I had my license. They, the, the crazy thing is that looking at it, it's like these people, because the bathroom door was open when I walked in. The front door was open. The entire unit stunk. And I just said, man, I couldn't handle it. I walked back out to my truck, called the office and said, hey, y'all need to get somebody else out here. This is crazy. So, Parker, good question. And, and those of y'all that are plumbers in here, do me a favor. Leave a comment and tell me what is the worst thing you've ever smelled? What is the worst smell you've ever seen on a job? Because, yeah, that one's kind of tough. All right, Parker, good question. Damien, hello from Las Vegas. Good to have you in here. Maka Delphin, how are we doing? Says, I'm an apprentice and just started school. What is the biggest tips to succeed in school? You know, th this is great. And, and, I, and I love this, Damien. Number one, or Maka, sorry. I love this, Maka, that number one, you cared enough to ask, look, what is the best way to succeed in school? Because this is things that, I used to tell apprentices that came into my classes, look, if you want to do well here, pay attention, come in with the ability to learn the, the knowledge that you're going to get. And when I say ability, a lot of people just come in, they, they want to pull their phones out, put them down under the desk and sit here and play on that. And, and they're losing out on a lot of great information. So what I will tell you is come in with the mindset to learn. Number two, if you don't understand something, Hang around, talk to the instructor after class, or if you've got another instructor there that you like, if it's in school, in a training program, ask them. Maybe ask the journeyman you work with during the day, hey, can you show me why this is the answer? Another good thing is always continue learning. Not just while you're in the apprentice training program, always continue learning. Because if you will, it, it'll benefit you and help you because you will always be ahead of everybody else in your trade. And Micah, I can't put enough emphasis on that because a lot of people, once they get their journeyman license, they just stop. They don't ever learn anything else. 
So always try to keep learning and it'll help you out. Benjamin says, I'm a plumber from Australia and was wondering if you knew about the differences between the plumbing industries in different countries. A lot of the plumbers I know down here like to claim that Austria has the most highly trained plumbers in the world. Is this true or just another case of plumbers tooting their own horns? It's probably they're tooting their own horns, and I don't mean that bad. But, you know, to be honest, Benjamin, Texas has one of the strictest plumbing tests and, and requirements to get your license. And I've heard that from all across the country. So, man, it's hard to say. I'll tell you one thing. I have reached out to, and I'll tell you what, we, we can have fun tonight. If, if anybody in here right now wants to have fun, uh, just put fun in the chat because I'm going to give us something that we can do if you really want to. Because I, I, I love, I'm not going to say pranking people, but I love having fun. So here's the deal. Here's what I would like. I've reached out to four different people. Okay, we've we, we got a few funds going. I like that. So I've reached out to a few different people that have plumbing channels. And I'll tell you all which ones they are. Because I'd like you all to go over to their channel, watch their latest video, and leave a comment saying, hey, you should collaborate with Roger Wakefield. Uh, and maybe even put something about, hey, he's got a great channel, whatever you want to put. But give him a reason why. So. The, the the one, two, three people, I said, guess I said four, the three channels that I reached out to were, and, and I'll give you another one. We'll throw an electrician in there for fun. Uh, here, here's, here's what I'd tell you. And, and we, I see we got Sean Strong in the house. Great to see you in here, brother. So go to Plumber Parts, which his channel's over in the UK. Uh and that's great because we've talked in the past about doing it, but now we're finally figuring something out that we can do. But Plumber Parts is one of them. The second one is Got to Learn. And I, actually, there are four of them. Uh, the second one is Got to Learn. I think that, that and they, they do pretty cool stuff there too. The third one is Stephen Lavamaneri. And if y'all are already watching some of these, Michael Gomez is drain addict. Look, I love the drain addict. Me and him have actually talked that that would be really a pretty cool deal. Uh, and you know, I, I may reach out to him too, just to see. But, and, and if y'all want to reach out to him and say, hey, you should collaborate with Roger. Uh, but guys, you got to, you got to tell people why. Tell them either, look, I love what Roger does. Roger has entertaining or educational videos. Give them a reason, but say, yes, uh, this is why. So it's got to learn plumber parts, Stephen Lavamaneri. And then there's an apprentice that's really started out here a while back, but he's actually doing pretty cool. And his name is Kenny Molotov. And, you know, what I'd like y'all to do is just go over there and, and say, Hey, look, here, here's what we'd like to do. Yeah. And it's look, look I, I love got to learn too. Uh, Stephen Lavamaneri does great stuff. Plumber parts. James is really pretty cool. I, I like a lot of the videos that he does. And Kenny Molotov is a student that explains his day to day and what he's doing. So, anyway, if y'all want to do that, that would be fun. You can open up another tab. Just go over to their one of their channels. Go to all four of them. Uh, hit play and leave a comment on a video. So, hey man, look, love to see you collaborate with Roger. Uh, and look, I've sent every one of them messages here lately, so it, it'll just, it'll make it fun because my idea and there we go. Urban Explorers in the house. Good to see you in here, Neil. The, the neat thing is, you know, I'm wanting to start hopefully like on Monday nights, I get in here and, and, and talk plumbing for, you know, an hour or so. And then after that, I bring in these other plumbers from around the United States, from around the country, from around the world and say, look, let's, let's talk about things. Why it's different in the UK versus the United States here in Texas. Why is it different in New York than it is in Texas? Why is it different in Colorado here lately? I've had plumbers reach out saying, Hey, how, how different are things 
in Canada than, than Texas. So we've had a lot of good stuff, but if y'all want to reach out to one of those four, or like I said, all four of them, that could be fantastic. And that way we get to learn more about plumbing all around the world. Michael C says, planning on replacing a water heater in the attic with tankless. Should I move it out of the attic? You know, Michael, I'm not real big on water heaters in the attic at all. I don't like water installed, you know, over my head. That way, if it does freeze or rupture, it's creating more problems. But I will tell you this. If a tankless is up there and you put the right valves and systems on it, or if it detects a leak, it shuts down. There's not a lot of extra water in a tankless, so I don't mind that. In a tank top, you could still lose 50, you know, 30, 40, 50, 80, 100 gallons in the attic if the tank ruptures. So that's where my problem is there. So on a tankless, I really don't mind it being left in the attic. Uh, plumbers in here in the chat, what do y'all think? If you were moving it or if you were replacing a tank in the attic with a tankless, would you relocate it to a cabinet down below? Next question in the form, Matthew Ray McDonough, how are we doing today? Uh, have you got a chance to use the Milwaukee Air Snake? You know, man, I have not got to do the Milwaukee. I've got the the general. And, and I got to tell you, man, I, I kind of dig it. It's actually pretty cool the way you can pump it up, squeeze the trigger, and release that pressure. Let, let me ask you all this. Since, since you're talking about Milwaukee, especially, Matthew, and y'all can leave this in the comments, have y'all tried the new Milwaukee camera? Because, man, I've heard great things about their, their sewer inspection system or piping inspection system. And, man, I am really interested in seeing it. Uh, says we, we used one of my coworkers blew out the wax ring. Yeah, I'd, I'd be laughing too. But, you know, you can do that with a plunger too. You can push hard enough with a plunger. You can actually blow out the wax ring, and it can lead to problems, as I'm sure y'all figured out. Dennis Lind is an electrician. Says, you, have you done any electrical work? I'm an electrician out in Central Florida. Been in the family for years. You know, the good thing is, no, I have not done a lot of electrical work. The, the bad thing is, no, I've not done a lot of electrical work. Uh, my, my deal is that's why I got into plumbing. I, uh, it's, it's funny, and, and, and I, I, I love questions like this, Dennis, just so you know, because literally last week, week before, I went over to fix a leak, and I, I literally I opened up my knife because I was trying to test a water heater, and I undid the clips on the little plastic cover on the thermostat and stuck my finger back behind it to pull it off, and when I did, I touched the heating element, which was hot at the time. So it lit me my tail up. Uh, and it reminded me why I'm not an electrician. So, you know, I, I haven't, but I will leave that up to you electricians. Dennis, tell me this, and you can leave it in the comments. Have you checked out, and this would be fun too if y'all want to do it, go over. There's a YouTube channel called uh, Journey to Master. Or actually, Electrician U, I think, is his bigger channel. Uh, again, a, another friend of mine. Go over and check his channel out and, and, and leave a comment and say, hey, you, you ought to collab with Roger. I've actually gone to Austin before to collab with him, but he ended up having problems. But if you hadn't checked out those two channels, Dennis, you may want to check them out. Really some pretty D – Dustin's a cool guy. Dustin Stelzer, really good electrician. I like him. Yish Ali from Cape Town, South Africa, recently started your own plumbing brand. Good for you. Hi, Roger. Will you advise having different service rates for low-income areas and middle-to-high-income areas? Is that fair? I, I don't think it's fair. I think that if you charge people different rates for what you do, that there, there probably are laws against that because it's like those plumbers that just pull up in front of a house and they see a Porsche or a Mercedes. They're like, well, I'm going to charge these people more. I, I don't think that's fair either. I think that if it's to the point that they're they're poor enough that you want to do something, you can discount it. You can give them things for free. You can do services. And, and it was put to me once, and this is probably why I look at it the way I do. And this is something that if you ever write down anything I say, 
this would be the one to remember. And it was put to me by an HVAC instructor one day. And it goes like this. There are people in this world that can afford to pay you what you charge so that you can take care of the people in this world that can't afford to pay you what you charge. And guys, I learned that like 15 years ago, and that has stuck with me for so long because I love helping people. And I do understand we're not the cheapest plumbing company in town. We're we're one of the best plumbing companies in town. And, and therefore, we more, are more expensive than others. But there are times that we get that call or we get that job that, man, we just understand, like, these people just can't pay this. And at that point, I step in and, and we either do pro bono work, we do comp work, we, we, we do everything we can to help them out. And we do it just because of that one statement. There are people in this world that can afford to pay you so that you can take care of the people in this world that can afford to pay you. And guys, I think that is a huge deal. <clears throat> Sinek Horak, I hope I said that right. Were you ever called to a boiler explosion? Also, were you ever genuinely scared of a job? Yeah, only to, and I'm going to answer these backwards. Well, no, I'll do it forward. I've never been called to a boiler explosion. I've been called to a fire at a house that they thought was caused by a gas leak. And I got the call because we had replaced a sewer relay in the yard. Uh, cool thing about it was we, we could tell by the fire. And if you've ever gone in to do a, a, a lessons learned or a post-mortem or whatever you want to call it on, on a fire, it it literally, when I mean, you start looking at where was it the hottest, what burned the most, and you can look and see, it's kind of crazy. So, no, I've never been on a boiler explosion. But the only time I was ever ever genuinely scared of a job, and, I mean, guys, look, I'm, I'm not the skinniest plumber in town. So what I'll tell you is, is my video lagging or something? I'm looking at it over here on another How's everything look? Does video look good? Audio sound good? Everything look good? Uh, reason I'm asking, I'm looking at it on another screen where I'm signed in incognito and I'm getting a bad, a bad look on it. But you asked me, is there ever a job I'm scared of? I'm, I'm not a little skinny guy. And for me, uh, pyramid beam houses, I climbed under one one time and I got in a position where I got stuck. I mean, I was blowing out my air. I was trying to push my way through. Uh, I was trying to do all kinds of, of funny things. But the crazy thing is I got stuck. And I'm literally, I'm freaking out. Of course, you start breathing more. Me, I think I'm, I'm like the Hulk because when I get scared or in a situation like that, I start swelling up. I started pulling out a screwdriver. And I'm reaching in my pockets. I don't know if I had a screwdriver or a pair of channel locks. And I am literally holding it like this, and I am digging away any dirt that I can to give me room to get out of there. So that, that's kind of the position I was in. All right, so I'm getting comments that video video is lagging. You might holler at Grayson, see if there's anything we can do. Uh, you know, we have not had this problem, so, so this is all new to me. Normally, video is, is perfect. We are using StreamYard now so we can bring in other people. Uh, and I'm wondering if sometimes we, we, we lose our Wi-Fi or stuff. I've got a deal up here. That, oh, okay. So, so what the problem is, guys, they're uploading a video over there, so it's eating up some of the Internet speed. Yeah, we need to make sure not to do that in here anymore. We also need to make sure the cords are plugged in. Everything's good. I know that the ether Ethernet cord back here is plugged in. Um, I just make sure make sure there's a good connection because it almost looks like we've got a Wi-Fi signal, and that's going to kill us. So that's the only job that I've ever been afraid of. Next one is David Valdez. How are we doing? Man, this is a long question. I guess you saw the part where it said, keep it short, please. 
I uh, don't have plumbing vernacular. Try my best. Parents were having water back up into the shower. Something is clogged. Uh, paid $1,500, so fixed the whole issue. I was wondering if you had ever dealt with a similar situation. And here's the deal. Uh, roots can take over a pipe, so yes. <clears throat> so the city here in Texas says it's not their responsibility. They're correct. And the plumber seemed to think it was theirs. Uh, normally, depending on where it is, unless it's at the tap, it is the responsibility for the homeowner. If it's at the tap, I've had some cities say it's their deal. But, you know, roots in a sewer, guys, it is something you want to avoid. Manuel Gauge says, 25-year-old German plumber in, in the master's school. It takes two years of school and an exam. Good for you. So if I would move to the U.S. and start to work over there, could I work as a plumber with my experience? Or would I start in the beginning? Here's what I would tell you is if you move to the United States, uh, I guess everything went good. Yeah, all of a sudden I, I lost the deal telling me that I had a bad signal. So I'm assuming everything's good, guys. Manuel, here's what I tell you. If you, the, the best thing to do would be reach out to like the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners. The reason being right now we are looking for plumbers because of all the flood breaks and stuff like that. And they've kind of put in special provisions to help people get their license sooner. So might be something worth checking in and seeing. They're going to want you to document your hours, any licenses you have, to see what they can do to show that you do have experience. And that will really help you a lot. If you can get a Texas license, then uh, reciprocating with other states and trying to do different things, it'll, it'll make it easier. Nicholas Beachler says, aviation mechanic by trade with an AMP license. I am a bit worried about the industry with the world going green. Do you recommend plumbing and would my skills transfer over? You know, a lot of the skills will transfer. Anytime somebody's mechanically inclined, guys, think about this. Their skills are going to transfer some. Now, do you understand hydrodynamics and stuff like that? Probably not. But you can learn the differences and maybe not a, as a mechanic, but aviation mechanics, you're used to working with tools. You're used to working with diagnosing problems. Once you understand the physics and everything about plumbing and behind it, you, you're, you're going to get it and it's going to help. And I hadn't even been playing yet. Looky there. See, man, I keep forgetting that I have this stuff. We do have some cool stuff now. Perfect timing. Okay, so let me go back over here real quick. Why is this important? Guys, we're, we're getting ready to do an, a giveaway on Instagram. So all I'm going to say is if you are not following me on Instagram, that's why I put this up here right now. You need to. Uh, we're going to do, actually, I'm going to say this. We're going to start at one giveaway, but we've got other things in mind that are really going to be cool. So it would be a good idea if you want to learn more about it to go over to Instagram because that's where we're going to do it all. And yes, Nicholas, uh, getting into the trades could be great because I truthfully think here in the next four or five years, Plumbers are making over $100 an hour. And I'm telling you, I think that's really going to happen. Guys, there's less people getting in the trades and more people getting out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be crazy. Jacob Payne says, hey, Roger, how are you? I'm an undergraduate student considering going into plumbing to run a future plumbing business. However, I deal with scoliosis and knee pain daily. So with the years of plumbing in my journeyman and apprentice years, be too hard for my body to handle. You know, it's possible, Jacob. Here's what I tell you, though. It is, to, to me, it's worth it. As long as you know that in the beginning and you're like, hey, look, I'm going to have to wear knee pads. I'm going to have to spend more time taking care of myself. Man, that can be huge for you. And if you will do that, I think you'll be okay. 
the the neat thing is, I, I love the fact that you're an undergrad. T tell me, what, what part of the world are you in? Uh, and you can put that in the comments, and, and hopefully I'll see it. But you know, my my thing is, and the reason I ask what part of the world you're in is, man, look, I would love to find an operations manager here that can literally run everything, because I've got so much going on with social media, with what I'm doing with Meter Dog. My wife and I are in South Texas a lot with Master Networks, and I'm running like crazy, but I've got people up here doing certain things. I still think I need a good ops manager, and, and I would love to get one in that understands the tracking, the numbers, ordering, training the guys that's good with people. There's a lot to it, and, and I, I guess, Jacob, that's why I'm asking. Are you going because you've got somebody that wants you to run their company or what? Because I think that, or you want to open your own plumbing company. He's from Canada. So, so yeah, if you're, you're a long way from here. But, you know, it's funny. I'm actually talking to a young lady up in Canada that does a lot on social media. And she wants to come down here and apprentice because of the, the way that I teach and the things that I do. And I thought that was really pretty cool. Joseph says, by chance, have you used the rigid electrical soldering tool to sweat copper pipe? And I have not. Uh, I'm an old school guy. I love fire. Uh, I love a torch. Uh, but it, it, it's kind of funny. And I guess Jack Daniel says, hi, daddy. Uh, man, if, if you're the real Jack Daniels. Okay, that was a joke. Uh Sorry, and I'm trying to read some of these longer questions. Uh, Joseph, I, I have not tried that. I would like to. I'm actually talking with Milwaukee and Rigid about some different tools to try out. I'll make sure to ask about that one because it could be good. All right, so Samuel Britton says, issue with what was thought to be a bath overflow leaking through the floor, damaging plaster and paint on the floor below. Tries on out to fix it, cannot seem to get it to stop. Finally ruled out the overflow, but I'm lost as to what it could be the issue. I've been a handyman for two years, and I've never encountered this issue. Really not sure what to do. Even trying to trace the source has failed any device. Any advice? You know, first thing I'll tell you is you got to figure out what makes you think you have a leak. Where's the, the signs of it? And go backwards from there. If it's right under a tub, if it's right under a shower, you know, what kind of things is it? I went and looked at a job today they thought was a slab leak. After I was there about five minutes, I'm like, yeah, you don't have a slab leak. But I was able to trace it down to a shower and a tub area. And the, after about five minutes, I told them, look, you, you don't have anything under the slab. Cut open. I want you all to know I cut a hole open that was two inches by three inches in the sheetrock. And literally, you could see the water dripping. And they're like, how did you do that? I'm like, I have no idea. Really, I did. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, you've got to go backwards from where you can find it to get to the point to where it's coming from. And you're, you'll get there. Dick Richardson says, what is your opinion on many plumbing pipes? I've been using them for a while now, but no other plumber has heard of them. Uh, I'm another one. Uh, let me know what the Manny plumbing pops are. I literally have no idea. I mean, you made me look bad because I thought I knew everything. No, trust me, I don't. I know that. Uh, Jack says, how can I show you a photo? Uh, guys, if you will go over to this subreddit and, and and thank you for sean strong being in here he he's kind of watching that and overseeing it and playing with it and sean i owe you email addresses i know uh but if you'll jump over to the subreddit that's a great place to send me a picture if it's a, especially if it's plumbing electrical good work bad work anything at all like that love seeing it so there's a link to my subreddit and you know, right there's a, a deal on the bottom. Click in the description down below. And I hadn't even checked the description down below, so I'm not sure if there's going to be a – if all this was set up and, and we put all the tags in there or not. 
All right, so let's click on this one right here and make sure I got the. Oh, it looks like it is in there. So yeah, go down to the description down below and there's a link to join the subreddit, but there's a link over there to my free mini course. Guys, that is a great thing to do if you're thinking about getting into the trades. Can be phenomenal. All right, Craig Close says, Hi again, Roger from England. When soldering, I know plumbers use lead-free solder. Have you ever known a case of lead poisoning where the cause came from soldering on pipes? No, I do not. I think that, you know, they were looking at how many solder joints water was going through to get to a system before it finally got someplace. So I think that that is why they started pulling lead out of everything. But I have never heard of a problem where they were able to trace it back and say, hey, this is what it is. So, Mr. Close, I think you're probably okay there. Noah Scott says, have you ever thought of making a gaming channel? The answer is no. The reason is, if you saw my AR video, you would understand why. Uh, we, we, we did an AR video, Real Plumber Plays Pop Games or whatever it was called. Had fun doing it, but yeah. I'm not a big gamer. My son is. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I enjoy playing video games. I'm just not good at it. But I, I do have fun with it. Preston says, I know someone who their bathtub is backing up in their house. It is an old house, and the plumber said that there is wire in the pipes to keep things from going down. Keep in mind, this house is old. He said it needs to come out. Does that sound right? You know, I would ask how he knows there's wires in there. Uh, Preston, has he run a camera? Does he know where the wires are? I've never really seen wires in a pipe. I've seen roots in a pop. I've seen backfall. I've seen a bunch of different things. So I can't say if it sounds right or not. But I mean, I have seen things where electricians have drilled through a line and pulled wire through it or, or even cable. So I've seen a bunch of crazy things like that. It's possible. It just doesn't happen all the time. So next one is from Blazej Ibrahim. Hope I got that right. Says, hi, Roger. How many calls did you receive during the Texas storms? Not from the United States, so most of the news I see is from Reddit. You know, I, I've got to tell you, right when it started thawing, we were turning down 20 to 50 calls an hour. It literally, the phones were ringing so fast. You'd be on the phone talking, and you would get three other calls that would come in all at the same time. And... Guys, I mean, I am 100% serious. It was literally that crazy. And and it's just, it's wild. Now, it slowed down a lot. Matter of fact, I've got plumbers that are talking about coming down next week and the week after. And I'm thinking, man, y'all may have waited a little too long. I think we've got most of the issues addressed. So if you were planning on coming to Texas, reach out to me and let me know. Uh, I hope I got your name right. It was crazy. The phones were freaking blowing up. Peter Chang says, what is the best thing to remember when working under a slab? You know, really, there's, there's a couple. Just because you're under a slab doesn't mean you're safe, doesn't mean the don't, dirt won't fall in. We lose plumbers every year here in the United States because they've got a poorly dug ditch or because that they, they just get in there and they forget and they're banging around on the sides of the ditch and this, that, and whatnot. I guess the most important thing to remember is, look, you need to always have an exit plan. Meaning if the tunnel's not real deep, maybe it's just a 15 foot tunnel. Maybe you lay down a piece of pipe and turn it up out of the ditch. That way, if there is a problem, people can at, at least blow air in, uh, oxygen in, send a mask in or oxygen mask, anything at all. Just you know, the thing is, just like anything else, if you're in a situation, you know, things can get dangerous, make sure you avoid that at all costs. What can you do to make it safe? And that's the biggest deal. Uh, Michael Waterfield says, what's your weirdest experience on the job? 
uh, you know, just recently we, we had one where we went, dug a tunnel, made a repair on our house. We had already told them, look, we don't think this is the only one, but we dug it and we fixed it. Lady calls back and says, hey, give me a few days because we, we'd given her a price to, to research and, and do the others. She ended up calling another plumbing company, sent us a message, says, look, don't come back because we told her we need to close the ditch up. She didn't want it closed up. She wants the other plumbing company working out it. And man, I, they must have cut it, undercut the heck out of the job or they're not getting it licensed or inspected. It may be a handyman. I don't know. But that was a weird experience. I've never been booted off the job or had my guys booted off a job like that. So that one really, really did surprise me. Uh, just kind of curious and interested because we told her we need to close the ditch up. She said, y'all aren't allowed back on the property. Uh, and, and, and she wasn't mad about it. She's just like, look, I, I just found somebody to do it cheaper. So I don't want y'all to close up the ditch because they're going to be working on it. And I was like, man, I feel sorry for them. Good luck. Uh, Carlos Hernandez says, what do you know about licensing transfers from California to Texas? The, the cool thing about it is right now is the best time to do it because they need plumbers in Texas, or at least they're, they're still operating that way. So you have a great opportunity. Go to the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiner's website. Go down and find where it talks about a provisional coming in. You can transfer your license to Texas almost immediately as long as you have a, a California or a, any state license. You can transfer it to Texas immediately, or Texas will grant you a provisional license. What that does, that gives you six months to get down here and work, figure out what all it's going to take to pass the test, and then take the pet, take the test and pass it. So, Carlos, my question to you is, do you actually have a California license, or are you the, the master contractor, whatever they call it out there? And if so, man, good luck to you. Uh, all right, so Alex Prothman says it's <clears throat> growing a YouTube channel, how to series. How long did it take your channel to see substantial growth? <clears throat> this is a great question because it takes a while. We probably had over a hundred videos up before we started seeing growth. Once we had 200 videos up, we started growing quite a bit. It was probably two and a half years that we hit our sweet spot and literally we were gaining 50 to 80,000 subs a month. So it can get crazy, Alex. Don't give up on it. Keep going. Uh, if you do, you, you'll end up appreciating it. Rafael Espinosa says, do you camera ever main sewer stoppage? And if you do, how much do you charge? Uh, ca sewering a camera stoppage is part of our drain cleaning price. So we don't charge extra for it. And yes, we want to video every single one of them because we want to see if there's a problem. All right. Let me jump back over in the comments and scroll through for a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is a good one here. It says, uh, why does the flu have to have run on it back to the boiler? So it doesn't drip. Yeah, because when it condensates, it will drip and you want it to drip back into the boiler. Good question. I don't know if, how long have you been working for? Uh, I've been plumbing for 40 years. And you can't automate plumbing. Boy, isn't that the truth? There we go. I love this. LS2 Chevy Astro says, hey, Roger, perfect time to take a break from remodeling my bathroom. Absolutely. Plumbers here, got to love it. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. I find it quite educational and entertaining. And I have fun. Uh, I mean, I enjoy what I do, but I love being able to get here and talk about it and help people and things like that. So it really is a big deal to me. So when does the immediate plumbing crisis in Texas, San Antonio, when does it end in Texas, San Antonio? I'm still searching for a hose bib and my plumber is still buried. Is it a frost proof or a hose bib? What is it in particular you're looking for? You might try to order it out of California and ship it in. As soon as it froze or as soon as I knew what was coming, that's what I did because I knew that the materials in California, they weren't going to be worried about it. So I did that right at the beginning. So, and 
thank God I did because it, it worked out really, really good. And I hit the comment. So now there we go. Jump me around a lot. Uh, there we go. Blair Scouten says your ops manager position sounds like 75% of my job. You know, look, to be an ops manager, it, 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 there's a lot to learn. The the cool thing about it is if you get the right person in that understands the plumbing too, they see both ends of it. The the really cool thing about it is if you can get somebody in with a business mindset, they learn to look at numbers. They learn to look at all the details. How many calls is each plumber running a day? How much are they billing? What is your rollout rate? Meaning what does a plumber need to make every time they pull up to a house in order for your company to break even? And are, are all your plumbers doing that? If not, man, unfortunately, it's time to replace plumbers. Uh, it's a tough world and a tough way to look at it. But we're, we're in business to make money, not just do plumbing for people. Some plumbers get that, some hate it. So it's crazy. Uh, yeah, Stephen says proper strength, proper strength training to make you more resilient and enduring in the job. Cable is 66. Love your videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Tommy Carney says an MPE 240A just installed while the water's milky white. Yeah, if it's if it's milky white like air bubbly, yeah, you may need to just bleed the heck out of the system. Christian Moreno says, what would be a good career route for someone starting plumbing industry in Texas? Uh, Christian, look, man, I've got a ton of videos on my YouTube channel about how to get started, getting into the trades, different things like that. You know, first thing is take the free mini course. Uh, I've got a link right there scrolling across the bottom right now. The reason I say that, there's a lot of different types of plumbing, commercial, residential, new, service, union, non-union. I ask a ton of questions to help you figure out what would be best for you. And once you figure that out, then when you watch those videos, everything will make a lot more sense to you. And your job is intellectual. Uh... Now, Christian says, I have experience in the pipe fitter. Yeah. And, and look, I've had, I'm a plumber, but when I got in the union, I became a superintendent. So I had electricians, HVAC techs, pipe fitters, welders. I had so many different pipe people, top people that worked for me. It, uh, it, it was crazy, but it, it works. I've only had one clog due to animals in the pipe. I had to reel a dead bird and a dead squirrel, actually twice. A dead bird and a dead squirrel. So I love that. Christian says, and I love every video you put out. Speaking of putting out good videos, look here. We have Mr. Paul Peck, drywall tube in the house. Cool, cool thing about this guy's look, he, he's, he's been doing this longer than me. Uh, he definitely makes better videos. Uh, a great channel to subscribe to. Him and I know Neil, the Urban Explorer, was in here earlier. Guys, if y'all want to see other people making great videos, Go check them out. And you know, here, here's another cool thing. We did our video post time. We changed it last week. So what I'm going to tell you all here today is at 545 when my video comes out, go click on it, like it, and share it. Either on face, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you can share it. Go share that video today. Th this will be pretty cool. Here we go. Yeah, Jack, Matt, and there's a lot of victim, victims of the Texas freeze. You know, the biggest tip I can give you is, is watch the video that I do on soldering. How do you clean it? Clean your pipe, ream it, clean your fittings, use flux, get a torch where you get good heat to it. But one of the most important things is blow it out. Get a air tank down there, get any, an air compressor, anything you can do to blow it out, trying to solder it with water in it, man, it can kill you. Kevin Austin says, hey, Roger, planning on opening a plumbing business soon. 
I've been plumbing since 1998, watched all your business videos. Thanks for the great content and help. Kevin, good luck, brother. I uh, don't know what part of the country you're in, but man, look, we need great plumbers out there and we need plumbing companies owned by great owners. So big deal. Kalisto says, have you ever worked with a European plumber? I have not. Have not. Sean Strong says, I'm there all the time and love answering questions. He is hanging over out in subreddit a lot. I think that's great. And, and man, the cool thing is I've had him in here in my lives. Uh, I, think, God, I think we may have even done a Monday night video. I think we've done LinkedIn. Pretty cool. And he's, he's a good plumber. I'd really like to get him here in Texas. NG Canada says, I'm having trouble finding your Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is right there, underscore Roger Wakefield. If you'll do that, it might make it easier. Uh, where'd I go? Where'd I go? Where'd I go? Where'd I go? There we go. Our scouting says, give it three or four weeks when his season kicks off. Guarantee a load of good picks headed to the subreddit. And look, man, we have fun over there. And we, we, we did one today about plumbing in Japan. So the, the subreddit is where we get a lot of videos, a lot of pictures. And man, I love it when plumbers go over there and post about what they've seen and done. So sounds interesting. I tell you what, this is a good one. Jack Daniel says, it says, what do you think about Indian plumbers? We did a video about plumbing in India. And I got to tell you, man, some of the jobs they have blew my mind, but I watched this guy over there work his tail off. I was like, look, I'll give this guy a job right now. Cause he's willing to bust his tail and do anything. And I just thought that was so cool. Andrew says, I'll be submitting my DIY work for you. Grading, installing a softener tomorrow. Fantastic. There you go. I like this. Everybody, and if you like what we're doing here, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like what we're doing here, leave me a comment and tell me why. I like that. Found that. There you go. Editor Grayson is in the house. Look at her. I love it. Thumbnails for tonight videos. We're already talking about it. And I got to tell y'all, that video comes out at 545. So hour and a half from now, man, go over there and check it out. Like it, share it, comment on it. That's the big thing is share it. Like the video and share it. Uh, just trying to see what that does with the algorithm, play our own games just to kind of check and see how it affects things. But yeah, if, if y'all will jump over there at 545, like and share that video, that would be really cool. Who is the youngest? We've got a 14 year old in here. Also wants to work in plumbing at a car mechanic. So wants to also, I want to work at a car mechanic place. So I don't know why I watch your vids. That's pretty funny. Uh, Roll Pavel, good to have you in here. Uh, look, car mechanic, electrician, HVAC. I have all kinds of people that come in here and watch. So you're good. When a water heater makes a sizzling sound, what could it be? I don't see any collected water heater or collected water. Uh, that could just be condensation because the temperature outside could be all kinds of different things. Sorry about that. Needed to hydrate again. Why do you have slabs and dig crews in the USA? Such a crazy thought for a plumber from the UK. <clears throat> okay. So slabs are when basically they take the earth, great, flatten out, build forms and pour concrete on the earth, I mean, directly on it as to where they want to build a house. And, you know, it, it's laid with the foundation. So the bricks, everything rests on the slab. 
we have dig crews because here in the North Texas area, all these houses are built on black clay that shifts when it's too wet or too dry. And what that leads to is leaks on either the copper, water, anything like that. So, yeah, it, it, it definitely happens. Sean says, and I can make it say whatever I want in the subreddit. He has fun over there. That's pretty cool. Jack Daniel loves my mustache. I, me too. And it, these are some of the best comments that I get. It, and Ben Hadu, ben Hadu I, I get these a lot. So I got to tell you, I, I really do. I appreciate that. I've had people come up to me and say, look, I watch your videos all the time. I hate plumbing. I'm not a plumber. But man, when I get started, I watch them all. So all I can say is, Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Take them dripping into the burner blow. There you go. And, and I've seen, I've seen condensation and like Noah just said, I have seen a very small leak inside of a water heater that, that literally it was just moisture print. It wasn't spraying anything and it would cause a drip. So architectural sheet metal, you are more than welcome. All right, all right. Bought a house. Your videos helped fix a few of our plumbing problems. Thank you for the help. Also, thanks for the studying info videos. Been able to relate it to your trade, electrician. That is so cool because, Mark, here's what I tell people. It, to me, it doesn't matter if you're an electrician, a roofer, an HVAC tech, a plumber. Man, I talk about things that help people grow their business. And to me... Man, that's what it's all about. So either you want to grow as a tradesman, you want to get into the trades, you want to open your own trades company, or you've already got one and you want to learn to use social media. To me, it, it doesn't matter what trade you are. You can learn so much over here. And as you see, my boss, Julie Wakefield, is in the house. Love seeing her in here. You know, great question. Uh Rich, here's what I tell you. My, my and it was my elbow. I'm not wearing a brace, as you see. But my range of motion is almost 100. percent It gets real tight when I get up here. I can probably bring my left one in further. And then whenever I go out, I'm still not 100 percent straight, but it is pretty close. It's doing so good that the doctor has told me, "Look, you, you, you're going to be fine." <clears throat> Now, Richard, this, this is a good way to put this, but 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 it's funny. I appreciate how you explain right, why the right way is the right way. And, and that's a big deal to me because there, there's so many people out there that just kind of halfway do stuff. And I've never been like that. Luckily for me, I learned from, from some really good plumbers, and they they were very persistent about doing it right every time you do it. I mean, when you join two pieces of plastic, make sure the letters are turned in the same direction. When you install cast iron, make sure that your letters, your bands, everything is true, square, plumb, straight, anchored. Just everything about it had to be right. And that has always been a big deal to me. Any of y'all, see, there we go. See, even, even the night bot knows. Uh, any of y'all have any questions, please jump over into the forum, answer them there. I know we've got a link pinned at the top, and I'm going to be jumping back over in a minute. I just kind of want to just jump through and say hello to people and see how everybody's doing. Uh, Tommy Carney's in the house. Good to see you in here. Dan, du Dan Duman, Troy Hallman, M. Whip, Austin Chadwick, Sean Graham. We got a lot of people in here still. Dragon MS. First stream. Love it. Don't give up. Nobody ever gives up. Uh, Parker Donovan. No, I've never had poop pop explode. Let's see what we got here. JMY512. Does love how you encourage people to explore the trades. Any advice for how to encourage kids to get more involved? Love for my son to consider a career in the trades. You know, it, it's really funny because 
I have people literally send me pictures of their daughters or, or their sons watching and listening to my videos. And I don't know if it's my voice. I don't know if it's I'm funny looking. I don't know what it is, but but for, for some reason, and I mean, they send messages and say, look, my, my son is five years old and he wants to watch your videos every night whenever we finish dinner. So I don't know what it is. I would try that, see if he likes it. Uh, you might also check, you know, some of the box stores that they do these kids crafts and stuff like that. And some of them involve plumbing and pipe and stuff like that. It could be really fun. Teach him how to make like a, a marshmallow gun out of plumbing. Man, he, he may fall in love with it. The Wookiee Warrior says, Roger, what is your favorite kind of food? Uh, I like eating anything that doesn't eat me first. Really, my big thing is I, I love steak and taters. I love pizza. I'm trying to go gluten-free. I'm also supposed to be dairy-free, so, man, it, it gets limited really quick. How do you drain down a water line quick, fast, and in a hurry? Well, you don't just drain it down. You blow it down. You use an air compressor, a pump, anything at all that it could take. Yeah, if I told somebody in the UK I needed to dig a cave under their house, I'd get kicked out. Would love to do a working holiday over there. You know what? Uh, you might get here and realize it's a lot of freaking work, but it's fun. Adrian says, first stream watching of yours. Very professional. Very cool. Thank you so much. Man, and and we're, we don't even do everything right. We're, we're trying to get better. There, there's things that we're continuously working on, trying to, trying to do things better. We're not there yet. We're still working on it. But I promise you, we have fun every day. Uh, any stalls for air compressing have done that. Poop pop shouldn't be under pressure. You're right. I love my Texas accent. Uh, thank you for your info, educational videos. Very good and helpful. I love it. I've already got to the bottom. Wow, I did. What happens when your septic gets full? You, you pump it out. Yeah. When it, monitor it. And when it starts getting full, you, you get it pumped out. Aaron Baez says, how do, or how can I get a license to plumb in Texas? First of all, do you have a license in another state? If so, it's a whole lot easier to do. The reason being right now, Texas is doing provisional licensing to help get people in. And that helps a lot. Why does a shower head leak with water without being near it? Leak water without being near it. Here, here's what happens sometimes. Uh, you've, you've got this water that, that sets in the riser when you shut it down. And there may be a little bitty leak in the valve or something. Maybe you didn't shut it 100%. A lot of times just that shower head holds water. And once enough air can come in through the head, it'll bleed it down. It's, it's like filling a, taking a pipe, filling it up with water, put your hand over it and, and pick it up and nothing will come out the bottom like a straw like we used to do. Things like that. It, it's, it's about the exact same process. Are Texas plumbers catching up? Well, we're catching up a little bit, but I still think that we're, I still think we're getting a lot of calls. I need to talk to Amber about that because I've got plumbers from around the country that, that are that are wanting to come in and and do different things. So, you know, anything at all. Yes, we're getting caught up. I don't think that we are 100% there yet, but we're, we're doing pretty daggum good. As many leaks and as many problems as there were, uh, I, I think it's, and I really think Texas is doing great. I'm going to jump back over into the forum for a minute. Any of y'all got any questions, please jump over into the forum. There's a link up top. If you'll jump in over there, uh, I promise you those questions will get answered. Everybody gets mad in the chat and says, well, he didn't answer my question. I just jump into the chat every now and then. Uh, we've got the forum set up so you can come over and, and post here. You can ask questions. You, you can do all kinds of things. 
Okay, over in the questions, Rafael Espinosa says, do you camera? Yes, we did that one a while ago. Ali Yang says, just had sump pump installed in the basement level of a home. And noticed upstairs kitchen sink seems to be draining into the pump basin. If we run water long enough, drain large pots, water evacs to downstairs sink. Drain pop out of the floors is not recommended. When do you think the problem is? And could it have occurred during sump pump install? It shouldn't have during the pump sump pump install. It could have. Uh, normally, there there wouldn't be a lot of other repiping done unless the plumber just saw something done and it wasn't tied in and tried to tie it in. I don't know why it changed anything like that. <sighs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Thank you, Julie. Julie brought me in a, a bottle of unsweet iced tea. All right. Next question in the forum. Raphael says, how would you start advertising your new plumbing business? This is really good. And, and this is one I, I really think a, a lot of people should learn, but I, I call it grow G R O W. And this is, all part of a course that I teach to people wanting to learn to use social media. But the G is grow your network because you can get out and network face to face with a chamber of commerce with master networks, any kind of group. And if you want to learn more about networking, Julie and I have a channel called how to network and, and you'll have to go in and search it by channel. Cause it's still a small channel. It's only got about 300, 350 subs, but we've got video where we teach people how to network. So that'd be number one. Number two is the R relate socially, start doing social media and relate to people, engage with them, communicate with them, do everything you can to teach people about what it is you do and why you do it, not to sell to them, but to teach them what you do and why you're different. What makes you better than anybody else? Oh, own video. You need to make videos to show people what you do. You don't just tell them about it. Make a video showing you changing out a water heater, changing out a kitchen faucet, anything at all like that. As a matter of fact, mention it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll get to the kitchen faucet in a second. The last one is W. Words are key. Learn how to use SEO on your social media because a lot of the social platforms are searchable. And I got to tell you, man, that has been huge for us. So learn how to do that and, and it can really rock your world. It can change everything. So back to the faucet thing that I was talking about. Here's another reason you need to follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'm working out a deal right now. Should be done here within the next week or so. One of the kitchen faucet manufacturers wants me to do a contest to do a, a giveaway. I'm going to do a contest. I'm going to get a lot of plumbers involved in it. But the neat thing is they're going to be giving some stuff away. So might be something worth checking out. Might be a great reason to follow me on Instagram. Uh, I really think it can be good for you. So, Raphael, those are the things that I would do to start growing my new any type company. Noah says, "How do you how do you drain down a pipe for a solder repair quick, fast, and in a hurry?" My hot water line had a corroded pinhole in it. Took eight hours of dripping for the water line to stop dripping enough to solder in your replacement pipe. So here again. No, a great question. Here, here's what I do. I would cut it apart wherever the leak is. So there's a pinhole. Cut it right there. Literally pull both lines down. I'm, I'm assuming this is under a slab. Pull both the lines down 
so that number one, you've got gravity working for you. Then go in the house and open everything. If you let air in and all the other places, that's going to let everything drain down easily. Once you get it drained to where it's just dripping, now hook an air compressor up and blow air in it. We also carry like a nitrogen tank sometime because we've got the, the blowout adapters like an HVAC technician uses. We can put a rubber grommet in there attached to a hose, crack that thing open, and it will blow it out and dry it out. And I'm telling you, what you said took eight hours, man, I can normally do it in five minutes. And that's to get it stop, to stop dripping. Marnus Swart says, why does the shower head leak water without being near it? I guess one we answered a while ago, it probably hadn't fully drained and it's kind of vacuumed or vapor locked. Once it can get some air bubbles in there, it'll start dripping. Milson Brown says, I'm 17 and I'm a senior from Florida. I decided I want to become a plumber. Can you give me the step-by-step -step on how would the process be? Yeah, here's what I'll tell you is first of all, let me find it. First of all, the, the banner scrolling across the bottom, there's a link in the description down below to the free mini course. Start there. Figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. Once you figure that out, then go look at my videos where I talk about how to get into the trades, how to become a plumber and watch those to give you a step-by-step -step right here. It's a million steps. I've made videos and I say a million, it's not really, but it would take me a while to go through every single step and all that as clearly as I do in the videos, going and watching those videos, you will learn how to find the best job, how to be the best apprentice. I mean, there's a million things there, but I promise you it'll help you. Uh, Troy Hellman says, what are your thoughts on the Renai tankless? You know, look, I think each brand of tankless water heaters has a great product. Uh, I really think, look, I, I like Renai, I like Navian, I like Bradford White. There's a lot of good brands out there. And, and, and I think that really, it uh, it's not a bad deal. I think right now everybody's having a problem with them because they all froze up. Almost all of them froze up. And the other big deal is we've been told that we can't get parts here for about six months. So that's going to be a problem. Isaiah McCutcheon says, what is some advice for someone who just started their, started their way on getting into the union? You know, the, the thing I'll tell you is always think about what does the union want? What are the benefits for them? What can you do for the union? Meaning, why are you getting in? Well, you want to get in because you want to learn, but how does that how does that benefit the union? You want to become the the best plumber you can be for them. That is going to help you grow. Always ask those questions too when you're in interviews and meetings. You know, how does this benefit me? If I were joining the union, I would be asking, how how does the union benefit me? Why should I work for the union? instead of for an open shop company and let them explain the benefits and, and let them sell you on it. Getting into the union is great if you want to be an employee forever. But if one day you want to open your own company, you're probably going to realize you don't want to be a union member then because it's harder. And not just hard. It, it, it's hard to open a, a company when you're given the union. I think the first five years of my company that I was union, I gave the union about four hundred, almost five hundred thousand dollars. Tell you right now, it wasn't worth it. Marcus Klafstel says, "Dumbest thing someone has called your company for." I, I've had people call our company because they think they have a leak. They don't have water. They don't see water anywhere. They just they think they have a leak. Uh, that, that's probably one of the craziest ones. Man, there, there's, there's always something, uh, and not that it's dumb. People just get an idea in their head about what something is or should be or something like that. So it can be kind of crazy, but it's also a lot of fun. All right. Yep. 
You got to like it. You got to subscribe and you got to ring the bell. Great job, Grayson. Boom. 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 Way to go. Uh, sorry, I get in here and play around every time, every now and then. All right, let me answer another one over here. Guys, remember, if you have questions, please go over to the forum. There's a link on top, and we will get it answered over there for sure. Christian News says, what is the name of your company? Uh, and this is another thing, too, I, and, I, and I tell people to, to, to just check it out sometimes. Uh, this in here because I can do this all right there's a link to it right there that is a link to my company which is Texas Green Plumbing you can go over and check it out Here's the cool thing about going to check it out is, look, I, I have got one of the best <clears throat> marketing and website people uh, I think there is. Uh, I've actually invited him down here to make a video. So we'll be hopefully doing that pretty soon and having fun. I've got, matter of fact, we did a video the other day. I have my <clears throat> Instagram coach come to town right before I went out of town last week. And the cool thing about it is, and she came in, we shot video, we talked about different things, then we went and had lunch. So it was fantastic. All right. Anybody else got questions, please go over in the forum, put them over there. <laughs> I like this. Ethan Smith says, what is the worst client you've ever had? By the way, I'm not interested in plumbing as a career. Just your videos are fun. So the worst client that I've ever had, I had a, a lady that we literally jumped through hoops for. And when I say jump through hoops, man, when I say it, I mean, it, it, it's a big deal. The reason I say that is, that literally can I make something go away right there. Literally, she had a gas leak. The gas company had came to gas company had come out and relocated her meter. Then when they went to test her house, they said, Well, you've got a leak in the house somewhere. We can't turn it back on. So I literally jumped through hoops for two days to get her gas turned back on. Kept her aware of pricing all the way through. She said, look, I know what it is. It's fine. I just need it done. Just please hurry. It took me personally seven hours at the city of Dallas, the historical society, the city of Dallas, the historical society, the city of Dallas, and the historical society again to make everything happen. She kept telling me, look, I'm fine. Just add it to my bill. I understand. At the end of day two, when we finished and I, I sent her her bill. She calls me and says, hey, I'm sitting here in front of the computer, and if you don't give me a reduced price, I'm going to give you a bad review. And I called her probably a not very friendly word and just told her, said, look, whatever you do when you give me my review, make sure you spell my name right. Because I just I wasn't worried about it. It's like, you know what, I'm not going to let people bend me over a barrel like that. So that, that is the worst client that I've ever had. Funny thing about it is, and this is why I hate the better business bureau. Literally I contacted them and explained everything to them, sent them emails, sent them text messages, sent them everything in the world. And they said, well, at the end of the day, she claimed it. So we can't take it down. I'm like, why? Well, then they kept telling me, well, if you'll join us, if you'll join the Better Business Bureau, if you'll send us a buttload of money, we will make you a member, and then you can appeal that 
and make it go away. And it's like, you know what? Y'all are shafting people. Why do I want to be involved with anybody like that? So what I'll tell you is, Ethan, thank you very much. Uh, I love making videos, love doing what we're doing. So I, I do hope you keep coming back. Daniel McCauley says, do plumbers do air testing in new houses? You're not really, well, air testing on water, yes. You do an air test as like a gross leak test to make sure you're not just going to flood a house. Uh, they normally don't do air testing on the plastic and things like that just because, you know, they say it's dangerous to air up plastic that it could actually explode. I've never seen that. May have to try it just to see. But anyway, no, we normally do water tests. It's easier to find the leaks. Max Bradley says, have you had a noticeable increase in profit due to the winter storms down there in Texas? You know, here's what I would tell you is, is not really. And the reason I say that is we did not up our prices at all. We did not do anything different than we weren't doing beforehand. And, and it's really funny because we could have, because it was emergency situations. I don't know if you heard me earlier saying that we were literally turning down 20 to 50 calls an hour. And we did this for a week. The phones would not stop ringing. So, you know, no, I have not seen an exceptionally large profit. The cool thing is our phones are still ringing. We're still busy. But I think I owe a lot of that to the website guys telling y'all about where I go a while ago. Okay, Arturo Cretero says, what is a PSI and how's it, how does a day of PSI typically look? PSI to me is plumbing per square inch. There's a, a group called PSI that is part of the Success Group International that helps you learn and do things. So tell me what you mean by how does a day of PSI typically look, unless you're talking about the training? Jump back in the chat for just a few minutes. Love this one here. It says, love how you encourage people to explore the trades. Any advice for how to encourage kids to get more involved? Man, I just, yeah, I would find fun things that they could build with plumbing stuff. Well, I guess my chat jumped way up over here. Yeah, Julie said it right there. If you have a new plumbing business network, licenses can transfer to Texas. Okay, Tyler, I love this because this is one I've been talking about for a while. It says, do you think they'll ever pass a national plumbers, a national master's plumbing license? And if so, what are your pros and cons on it? The pros are when things happen like just happened. Texas had freezes. Actually, a lot of places around the country did. Anybody that needed plumbers could have just said, hey, look, if, if you have a national certification, come on, we need you. The good thing is I think Governor Abbott and Lisa Hill and Frank Denton and everybody responded quickly. I was actually on a phone call with the governor the week that things were thawing out and he was asking, you know, what kind of problems, what plumbing license laws and board rules are in place that will delay people coming in that will keep them from getting a license quickly. What can we do to speed up this process and help the citizens of Texas? And I got to tell you, I think governor Abbott did great there. It was a good call to be on. He had a lot of key players and it made things happen and, and made them happen quickly. So I, I think it worked out really good. I like the idea of the national certification. I've been a proponent of that for a long time because now say a hurricane comes into Florida next month. I know it's not hurricane season, but say a hurricane comes in and things are slow in Texas and we've got people sitting on the bench, people unemployed, whatever it is, those people could literally hop in a truck, head to Florida and get a job immediately and help take the strain off the plumbers in Florida. So I got to tell y'all, I man, this is one of my favorite ideas, and I do. I love this.
Joshua Romero says, are lye-based drain cleaners bad for drain pipes and why? I think anytime you're putting chemicals into drain pipes, it's not a good idea. They're not designed for that. Uh, they are literally there to help transfer water and waste. I think that's all that should be put in. Once you start putting chemicals in, you, you can alter the composition of the pipe, and I don't think that's good. Jose de Roman says, can I transfer my license to Texas? Yes. And I say that if you have a real plumbing license, contact the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners. We've got a provisional right now. So right now is the easiest time to get a plumbing license in Texas. So it could be great. Which drain opener would you recommend to unclog a toilet? Fred, I am actually very fond of a closet auger and also these new air snakes. Uh, we've got the general water hammer or, or yeah i think it's a, a water hammer chamber or something like that i freaking love that thing i think that is such a cool deal hvr apprentice says i'm on my way to getting into my union good luck uh guys if, if you're an employee the union is great because of education and training i think phcc is also phenomenal so there's a lot of different opportunities out there do what's right for you but but ask questions learn what they expect from you what you're going to get out of it, not just them, and, and go. Chronicles, you're right. I am live. There you go. Greatest answer of the day right there. If you have a new plumbing business, you need to network. Network to grow your business. Uh, I have never heard that you could use Vaseline instead of Flux. Matter of fact, I would say that is probably not true uh and the reason i say that is flux actually does pre-tanning and cleaning and, and things that i know vaseline doesn't matter of fact you put put flux on your hands like in the sore or something you're going to realize there's chemicals in there that really do a lot to the pipe that i know vaseline doesn't have in them here's a good one mansoor says does epoxy lining for sewer pipes lower the thickness of the pipe? If yes, is it a problem? It does narrow your, your diameter, the interior diameter. The reason I say that, so it's not going to lower the thickness. It's actually going to make the, the pipe wall thickness thicker. I don't think this is a problem because plumbing drain pipes aren't designed to be full flow anyway. So limiting that just a little bit, not a problem. You know, and this is a good one. John says, Flowtech Home Discover, what's your thoughts? I've got one at my house. And I've had tons of people tell me why they don't work. But I will tell you this. I don't see the white powdery buildup of calcium and magnesium on my shower head, on my aerators, places that I used to see it all the time. So I'm not going to tell you they don't work. But I'm going to tell you, I don't see any signs at my house saying they don't. I can't tell you why they work. but Man, it's been good for me. And those of y'all that like Flowtech, y'all need to check out that product I was talking about earlier, the Meter Dog. It literally, it, it's almost the same type deal. It's just modern technology that does something different. And what Meter Dog does is it remotely detects leaks. And this is going to be the biggest thing that plumbers can sell in the future. And I think this is going to be great for homeowners because what's going to happen is this helps them figure out when they've got a leak at home. And if plumbers are really water conscious and really worried and want to help people do well, this is one of the greatest devices I've ever seen. So all I can say is check out meter dog. I put a link to it in there, remote water monitoring. And I went to Austin this last week, put one on at an apartment complex down there, or really their townhouses, that they think they're losing five gallons a minute on a leak, and they're not because their their meter is stopping. So pretty interesting. Priyanshu says, your mustache looks cool as always. I appreciate that. I have to work hard on this every day. Most embarrassing plumber situation for the client. Uh, 
You know, I had a plumber one time tell me that, that he had to use the restroom at a customer's house. So he had changed out a toilet or done something, literally went in there and used it, which is completely against my rules. But then as soon as he came out, the customer was standing there and needed to go in there. And apparently it didn't smell too good. So that's probably one of the most embarrassing ones. I think it's crazy. Charlie Grutzner, how are you? Uh, says, I'm 16 and learning plumbing at a trade school. Any advice? Yeah, never, never stop learning. If you're learning right now, number one, always try to be the best apprentice in your class. Be the smartest. Be the hardest working. Be the one that shows up at the job early. The, the last one to leave, that's going to help you become that kind of journeyman, that kind of master, and hopefully one day that kind of plumbing company owner. I think that is huge. Why am I so ugly? Just kind of is the way it is. Not a lot I have control of. See, most people wouldn't show that. Me, I really don't care. Okay, so crazy one. So I want to own a pawn shop when I'm older, but plumbing interests me also. I can't believe you had to explain how to use a plunger. I get it, but I still have, but still. You know, look, everybody doesn't get it. Everybody doesn't understand it. I love the fact that I'm able to teach people how to use all kinds of plumbing tools, not just a plunger. But look, I've, I've had to hold people's hand, teach them how to use a plunger too. And I didn't really turn out to be a good video. So somebody asked me this one earlier. Have you, have you had noticeable increase in profit due to the storm? Man, no, because we don't, we didn't change our prices at all. Uh, This is a good one. Matt, Matthew Brasiliano says, Hey, Roger, been plumbing for the last 10 years over in Pennsylvania. Strive to be the best I can be and do the right, do right by my customers. Absolutely love your channel. Uh, number one, Matthew, thank you for that. Look, I love my customers. And this is something that is part of what I teach whenever I'm teaching people about getting into the trades becoming a better tradesman, opening your own company, or even the ones learning how to use social media to grow their company. If you fall in love with your customers, you will always do the right thing. And to me, that's huge. So I heard the siren. I think they're coming to get me. Uh, but the neat thing about it is if you will always try to take care of your customer, always do the right thing for them, you'll never steer them in the wrong direction or do the wrong thing. So to me, that's pretty cool. Matthew, thank you. Uh, Daniel's a great channel. Always been interested in the other trades. I am a oh, and time served framing and joiner. Love the content. Well, thank you very much. We enjoy it. We're having fun. Uh, love what we do too. Man, it jumped on me again. Sometimes it does that, and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Where are we at? I heard Amperlina's in here, and there I see her. <laughs> Great question. Why are service isolation valves important on a tankless water heater? Asking for a friend. Uh, you know, here's the deal. Service and isolation valves are big on a tankless because... When it's time to flush them, you need to be able to shut the valve right there at the tankless. You don't want to flush the entire system. So isolation and service valves are huge. Every plumber who installs a tankless should install them no matter what. Make it part of the price. Make it work. Do it. And, and you, you'll be happy you did. Because chances are when you do it, you're going to be the one they call back to come, come in and help. Anytime they got problems. Paul Peck's right. Video it or it never happened. Boy, that's the truth. Man, I somehow must have jumped over a bunch of comments because my chat jumped real quick. I'm just going to start right where I'm at and keep going from there. Great one here. If you're enjoying the stream, please share it out. Uh, go down underneath, hit the share button, go to your Facebook. 
your Instagram, your Twitter, wherever you share stuff at, share it out. Take a picture of yourself. If you got me in the screen, take a picture of yourself, tag me in it on that platform. So it's either at underscore Roger Wakefield or just at Roger Wakefield. Tag me and I will make sure to go in and comment and, and share that post too. Blake Drury, it is going wonderful. How are you? Boy, I get it. It's not in the UK. I need to go or I won't get up in the morning. Uh, B.A. Clark, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. See ya. Flash in your pan is in the house. Good to see y'all in here. I love that. Now, this is one that I get a lot. And, and, and Paul and Sean, if y'all are still in here, answer this one too because – I think it's great to see different people's point of view, but how did I get started in the trades? When I was 16, I was managing a fast food restaurant, a burger joint. One of my best friends worked there with me. And the really cool thing about it is, man, it, it, we've been best friends for years. And we're talking one night because it was slow. And he said, hey, look, are you going to do this forever? And I was like, what do you mean, man? I'm, I'm 16 years old. I'm managing a restaurant. Life is good. I'm going to be wrong. I wasn't getting rich or anything. But the cool thing about it is we, we kept talking. He says, so what happens if you get fired or you quit? I said, I don't know. He said, well, who's going to hire a 16-year-old restaurant manager? And I don't guess I thought much of it at the time because I thought, yeah, that, that wouldn't happen to me. A couple of weeks later, I, I probably got fired. I may have quit. The big thing about it, though, is I called one of his brothers because of the conversation we had that night. Because he was telling me about his three brothers and his father that were all plumbers, and they loved what they did. The really cool thing about it, robots will never be able to do plumbing. And we had that conversation that night 40 years ago. And to this day, robots still can't do plumbing. Now, robots may be able to manufacture pipe. Robots may be able to crawl through a sewer and take pictures and look for leaks and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, robots are not going to be able to do plumbing. Not all parts of it. So this is a great trade to be in. That's how I got in the trade. And I'm glad that I did. Paul, Sean, any other plumbers in here? Leave a comment in here. How did you get in the trades? Because I, I think it's neat when other people hear these stories too. Because we've all got a different way in. And everybody who wants to get in the trades, they always send me the same message. I want to get in the trades, but I don't know anything about it. I'll tell you what. When I first got into plumbing, I knew nothing about it. If I became an electrician tomorrow, I know nothing about it today. At least not enough that I could call myself an electrician. None of us. If you want to become a big YouTuber, you can say, well, I don't know anything about it. You know what? Before I started three years ago, I knew nothing about it. So the opportunities are out there to do whatever you want to do. But you've got to start. And that's how I got started in the trades. I want to say congratulations to Luis Magana. He says, just got my plumbing license. What's next? If you're not doing it yet, always try to be the very best you can be. The best plumber, the best foreman, the best superintendent. Whatever it is, if you're getting into the trades today and you're an apprentice, become the best apprentice you can be. It will literally change your life. Everybody always wants the best and we pay for more or pay more to have the best. So always try to be that. Huh. Flux tastes terrible. And then that's the truth. The Muslim plumber, how we doing? Welcome. Good to see you in here tonight. Says ever seen three inch ran to an island sink. I can't see I have. I've seen two inch. Can't say I've ever seen three. Why are combi condensing boilers not popular in the United States? Most of Europe use it. Man, I, I can't even tell you. Number one, a combi boiler we don't use a lot because we don't use our water heaters for radiant heat unless we're like up in the the far north. And I think they use a, co a lot of combi heaters down here in Texas. I don't know that I've ever seen one down here. 
There you go. Networking is good for any business. You know, and we're involved with Master Networks, Julie and I. Like I said a while ago, if y'all have not seen, and I'm jumping over here to see what I can do. Uh, maybe I can put a link in here to it. I am looking for mine and Julie's other channel because we have a channel called how to network and I'm going to put a link to it in here just because and we got 331 subscribers. So it's not too bad. Uh, so what I would say is if y'all want to learn how to network, uh, this has been phenomenal for us. We're involved with master networks and you know, we're, we're, man, we're spending a lot of time, Julie more than me, but we're spending a lot of time traveling around Texas, helping people out, helping them learn to grow their business and, and basically helping them do it through networking. And it's been really good. Uh, have met some phenomenal people. So man, we, we thoroughly enjoy what we do and man, we get to meet so many cool people. Can scheduling on a water heater be unsafe and make water dirty? You could probably make water dirty because if you go flush it, you can get everything out of it. So yeah, it, it, it probably can. You get calcium and magnesium built up in there. Absolutely. Pawn shop already answered that one. Can you turn a water meter off with a crescent wrench? Some of them you can, some of them you can't. You think starting in new construction rough ends is a good step to move into service? Yeah, because you know the cool thing is, Shane, you're, you're going to end up learning how all the piping underground goes. So yeah, anytime you you can do stuff like that, yes. You know, look, Pepsi. Got to tell you that there's always somebody that doesn't like what we're doing. And, and the bad thing is, I wish they'd just leave me a comment and tell me, hey, here's here's why we're going to give you a thumbs down. You know, we think you talk too much. We think you're ugly. I mean, trust me, I, I heard. Maybe that's who it was a while ago. Do you know you're ugly? Maybe that was it. Rex Swan says, learning plumbing got me into a high-pressure boiler operator making good money. Guys, look, you can make great money as a plumber. I tell people all the time, I know plumbers that make 150 to several million dollars a year once they become owners. So there's so many opportunities. You can literally do whatever you want to do. Saltine Cracker, welcome to the show. Says, in my area, all the plumbers are dirty and it's become the norm. Now, when you say dirty, do you mean dirty and muddy because they're under houses all day or are they just dirty, nasty people? Just curious. That is sad. Love this. Jen HL says, I just really enjoy these. Not a plumber, not interested in being one, but made me have mad respect for the trades. Much, su much success from the Netherlands. I love that. Thank you so much. Miss Amberlina Mendoza, thank you for being here. I love having you in here. See, ma'am, I love it when my team jumps in and shows the support. Uh, we've really got some great people. Christian G says, I'm an electrician, but I love your content. I'm glad I chose my trade. You guys have it rough. Uh, you know, the, the cool thing is, look, I, I think that we've got it phenomenal. It, a lot of people say it's rough, but like at the end of the day, I love what we do. It, it's great for me. And man, I meet so many cool people. So here we go. Getting into the good stuff right here. Okay, so Pepsi's going to be the pawn shop owner. Hey, look, man, I know a buddy owned a pawn shop. Good trade or good gig to have. Sean says, started at 15 as a night maintenance man at a hotel in Cocoa Beach. And look, I know people that started in, in the trades. They were a maintenance man at an apartment. I remember I, I applied for a maintenance man position one time because I got a free apartment. And I thought, man, that would be great. Uh, 
Anyway, yes, Justin, you, you can use that comment. Oh, you do use that comment. Good. Yeah, and Paul, that, that is that is really neat. Uh, so, so there's the deal here. Powerpuff boy 19 says I've been an apprentice for eight months, learning so much, love the trade, but my knees have been bothering me so much, even though I use a good set of knee pads and even knee sleeves. And all I say is keep using them and, and learn how to get up and down with help. Meaning you'll put a toolbox near you, put a ladder near you. Anything you can do to help take the pressure off, because look, it, I'm, I've got knee problems too. It is what it is. And then, of course, I buy the biggest, most jacked up truck I can find. So when I get up in it, I mean, I've literally got to step up in there and pull myself up in, but it's what I wanted. So do what you want. All right, guys, I'm going to jump back over into the forum for a little bit. If you've got questions, you definitely want answers to jump over there. Ethan Smith says, I'm interested in pawning for a career, but what is good process for PVC? I've been project using inch and a half PVC pop. Can't find a price that reasonably I've only found 10 feet packs for 80 bucks Canadian. Man, it's hard to say on pricing. I'll tell you what you can do. Go to ferguson.com. And, and, I, and I say that just because, number one, they, they sponsor my show. But go to ferguson.com and, and check and see what pricing is. That, a lot of this stuff you can research, just Google and find out what you can find pricing for and then compare that. And I think that'd be good. Ty. Escobar says, any way to quickly get air out of your popping? My water comes from a cistern. Sometimes when the water runs out, the water pump may continue to run, pumping in air. Uh, you could put an automatic air vent, like a, a high point vent that, and look, I've, I've installed these in heating water and chill water systems before, so I know that they're out there. But it's a high point vent, so you'll put a high point loop and put an automatic air vent on it. Yeah, that's a a great way to do it. Hey, I, ho I hope that that helps you. Arturo says, recently got an interview for an apprentice plumber slash PSI. And I was wondering what they mean by PSI. I'm not sure. Does PSI mean inspection around the building? You know, I'm, I'm really, I'm not sure what company it is and what they're talking about. Uh, PSI, I have not heard of. There's so many different roles in plumbing, though. Look, you can get in plumbing and end up being a, a CAD operator, a computer-assisted designer. So a lot of different things that you can look at and, and think about and do, stuff like that. The opportunities are really whatever you want them to be. Keep up the good work. Sherdy Salim, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, this one's up to you. Should I, should I keep working or what do you think? Man, that's going to be up to you. I did put a link in there earlier uh, over to my other YouTube channel that I do with Julie where we talk about how to network. Be a great one. If you're interested in one day growing a business, Jump over there and subscribe, and you'll see why. Greetings from Argentina. Ulysses Blaine, thank you. Good to have you in here. Uh, Pepsi, no, I, I don't play video games. Uh, and, and I say I don't. I, I, I like old school games like Asteroid, Galaga, stuff like that. Man, I'm not a big gamer. But I enjoy, I enjoy it. I enjoy it to an extent. Nick, 2373911 says, Roger, I'm installing a shower pan and I'm, I'm wondering if you need to put any kind of mortar mix or can I just lay it on the subfloor? Here in Texas, you've got to put it, you got to put down a mud bed, a mortar mix, because it has to drain to the drain also so that your shower pan doesn't have a high point at the drain and maybe holds water. So, yeah, you would definitely need to do that. 
Jalen says, I want to pursue a career in plumbing, but I'm a convicted felon. Will that hinder me? Anything is possible. I would, not knowing what your felon was for, uh, you can contact the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners, look at their supplemental criminal history form, and see what crimes. Here's the thing, depending on how long ago it was, that they may even say, hey, look, you know that, that was 20 years ago. Get us some letters showing how you've done and changed and stuff like that. You can probably still get a license even with that. Shane Daly says, going on fourth month doing new construction for plumbing. How much more experience should I have with new construction to move into service? You know, that's really a, an up to you question. Is service what you want to do or is it new construction? And that's why I tell people all the time, go over and, and put in the, the link to the free mini course and take it just to see. You may realize, look, new construction is your thing. Maybe you don't want to get into service. So lots of different ideas there, lots of different choices. But, man, you got to do what's best for you. And I can't tell you how long it should take you or how long to stay in this and do that because that's different on all of us. Are you in construction because you want to learn more about how plumbing is installed? What are your reasons? And, man, you may not want to get out. Sean Strong says, I left a thumbs up on this live. That's great. Guys, if you like it, please leave me a thumbs up too. If you don't, leave me a comment here in the, or leave me a message here in the comments and let me know what was wrong. Thomas Curl says, what was the, the thing you saw on the wet trade, the best thing you saw on the wet trade show? Well, it was me. Uh, those of y'all that don't know, I spoke at wet this year about social media. I did a cool video off of uh, some videos and pictures and stuff we got off Reddit. That was great. You know, Thomas Curl, really, there, there's a couple of cool things. Connected with some neat people. I'm looking at, at doing the new flow pipelining. Uh, so got to meet with them and talk to them. There, there's just so many wonderful people at WET and so many different businesses and tools and equipment and technology that, man, you cannot, you, you, you just can't get around and meet everybody and learn everything. I think wet and, and I owe Sean for, you know, the reason that I, I was there this year, I reached out to them after talking to him one day and it was just phenomenal. So I thought it was great. I think new line or new flow was probably one of the coolest things for me. So definitely looking forward to it. Now, this is hard because Ulysses says, if you had to choose only one tool for the job, what would it be? It depends on which job it was. Am I doing a water line, a, a sewer line? I've got a go bag that I carry up with me whenever I go to work on houses. And it has you know, adjustable pliers, adjustable wrenches, multiple screwdrivers or, or, or 11 and one screwdrivers. Normally has a light, like a flashlight, a headlight. I've got a lot of different things in there. It, it's hard to say if you only had one tool, what would it be? Although I got to tell you, uh, I do carry my Leatherman Crunch with me just about everywhere I go. You, you saw it out here. I, I used it in here earlier, used it on a job earlier. That one tool I carry with me everywhere I go. Uh, See, I, I love this. And look, guys, we, we've seen this this one a lot tonight. And, and not not the same person. Not even thinking or wishing to be a plumber or job-related, but I love your content and can't stop watching. Thank you so much. Jen HL is out of here. Thank you. Is it bad to eat Green Gobbler? Uh, yeah, I, w I wouldn't recommend that at all. Back over in the forum, Jalen again. Uh, already answered that one. Joseph says, can you turn a water meter off with a crescent? Already answered that one. Ulysses says. A Leatherman Crunch. 
Thomas M. Work, starting as an apprentice, what can I do to stand out? Man, this is a good one. Uh, I, I love this, Thomas, because th this is what I try to teach people all the time. Number one, you do want to stand out. You always want to be, whether if you're an apprentice, learn more than any other apprentice. Learn to do things right. Learn to have that attitude that that can do, will do, whatever it is attitude to where when a plumber is, here, here's the way I s explain it to apprentices. You want to be that apprentice that sees what the plumber needs next. So when the plumber looks down off the ladder, you're standing there with it saying, here you go. Whether it's a tool, whether it's a fitting, whatever it is, you want to always look at that plumber and try to read his mind and know what he's going to need next as a journeyman. Become the best educator for your apprentices. Become the best foreman you can be. Learn how to help people. Uh, because as a foreman or superintendent, you can literally have impact on people's lives by teaching journeymen and apprentices how to get better. So if you really want to stand out, be the very best you can be. And plan on doing that throughout your career. That will set you apart from everybody. Man, that last tea went through me today. That's good. So, Thomas, I hope that that helps you out. Still got questions over here in the forum. I hope that if y'all have questions, you get over there and post them. Ethan Smith says, I'm looking at my plumbing in my sink right now. There's some white stuff on it. Should I be worried about it? You don't have to be worried about it. If it's the white stuff that I'm thinking it is, it's probably calcium and magnesium buildup. I do have a flow anti-scale device on my house. People tell me they don't work, but I'm telling you all that white powder stuff went away so they can say what they want. Here's the thing, Ethan, is if you're seeing it on your aerators, you're seeing it on your shower heads, chances are, it's also in your washing machine, your ice maker, your dishwasher, and everywhere else that you've got problems. So, man, you, you really need to be very, very careful. Check your water. See how hard it is. See if there's something you can do about it to make it better. Nicholas Williams <clears throat> says, hey, Roger, currently doing a whole house gut and working on the shower pan right now. Wondering if there's anything to put down before laying it on the floor. Yes, you want to do a mud base, definitely. Answered that one. Mr. Aaron Stone is in the house. How are you, sir? Says, why are water sewer tests important for homeowners and realtors alike? Uh, stash looks solid. Thank you, sir. Uh, sewer water test. Here, here's why it's good for home buyers. And, and let me tell you first a story about why I do them. I literally got a, a call from a friend one day who lives not far down the road. And he says, Hey, we have a young couple that just bought a house in our neighborhood, paid $30,000 for our, I'm sorry, paid $300,000 for it. They've got a plumber that came out. They're having sewer problems. They're saying he needs a whole house repop $60,000. So imagine buying a $300,000 house and then being told you need to spend $60,000 more to make it work. Unfortunately, when I asked them, have you heard of a sewer water test? Did your real estate agent recommend it? All these answers were no. So why is it important? If you buy a house, you have an option period in which you can do a sewer water test. If they tell you they don't want you to run, that means they know there's something wrong. So I think it's important for homeowners because that is your peace of mind. That is your insurance. Can you imagine spending $300,000 on a house and then you need to spend $60,000 just to get it for the plumbing to work right? I would have tested that in the beginning and known. But it's also important to real estate agents because as a real estate agent, you want to recommend to your buyers to do everything that's going to protect them. So, man, all I can tell you is, and Aaron, these are great questions. It's important to the home buyer; it protects them, but it's equally as important for the real estate agent because they're protecting their buyers. And sometimes doing that, helping them out, teaching them 
can be the best thing you can do? Great question. Uh, Want to say hello there? Can't even say your name. On Kukanab, and I hope I'm right. No figure reigns. Are you on Roger subreddit? If not, you should be. Thomas Warwick says, I'm getting ready to start as an apprentice. What can I do to stand out? Answered that one while ago. Pawn shops are great. Yeah, good to have you in here, brother. All right, all right. Answering more questions on the forum. Russell says, do you find it? benefits you or sabotages you to withhold money from your tax for things like motor vehicle accidents, job site mistakes, wasted time, dissatisfied customers and callbacks. Here's the thing. And, and, and to be honest, we don't do any of those. And, and it does. It, it hurts us as a company because, you know, we don't have the accident agreement forms, which most companies do. If you're in an accident and it's your fault and the police says, hey, this was your fault, or you say, hey, I was looking down at the phone and I hit the car in front of me, that's your fault. At that point, most companies have things in place that say, if that happens, you're responsible for the deductible. Why should I have to be? Okay? Because I ask you to drive my car. Well, I ask you to drive it safely, and that means not looking down and texting. So if it's determined it's your fault, yes, I, I think that those – People should have to pay for that. Job site mistakes. Here, here's the deal. And, and, and man, we, we could get up on a soapbox and preach. I don't withhold money from people for job site mistakes. Unfortunately, I send them back to fix it and I pay them again. Which do you think is fair? Uh, Russell, j just asking. Next one is wasted time, dumb time. Uh, wasted time. I, I cannot get guys up and out of here fast enough in the mornings because I see what the day has ahead and we need to be moving and, and humping it and get out of here. Uh, we, we don't deduct anything for that. Dissatisfied customers. We don't deduct anything for that. Callbacks. We actually have to pay people to go back. So what do I do? When I'm watching my numbers right and I know where these problems are, I fire somebody. Sorry, just you're you're not at the end of the day, I'm in business to make money. I want to do it by training the best plumbers, having the best plumbers, and doing things like that. One thing that I learned in business a long time ago, hire slow, fire fast. When I have somebody that's showing me signs of a lot of these things, it's time to cut them loose. And that's why I am always looking for good plumbers. When I find good plumbers, I want to talk to them. I want to see what it's going to take to get them in here and things like that. Uh, we're a small company that really didn't have the idea of a lot of these things. But I got to tell you, why should I pay a plumber to go install something and then pay him to go back because he did it wrong or because he made a mistake on the job? He didn't tighten up the P-trap so it leaked. Because here's the deal, when it leaks and floods a cabinet, I'm the one that's got to pay for that. I don't think that plumbers should ever be paid for callbacks. I paid you to do it right the first time. Why should I pay you to go back and do it again? So at that point, it's it's like fishing. You just cut bait, cut it loose, let it go. Sorry, but man, now, if it's just something that happens with a plumber once every six or eight months, that's understandable. But I've had plumbers that, I mean, every week you had a callback. It's like, look, I don't want you here anymore. I don't need you, and I don't want you. You are bad for our business. So that's how I look at it. Uh, <clears throat> here's a good one. Sam Ham says, I find myself getting frustrated when we get too busy with emergency services and can't service customers with leaks and repairs. I hate the feeling, but it's not a permanent busy to hire another worker. And, you know, the good thing is, and that's what was neat about all the plumbers reaching out from around the country, 
can you bring somebody in to help you for a while? I love that. David Thornton, we got a journeyman plumber in here. I love it. I love it. Good to see the Ukraine in the house. Uh, where did that go? Man, I lost that one, but I want to say thank you for the super chat here. Corn fart says, if I don't use a faucet for a week, why is the water brown? There is probably, there's either hard water, there's some kind of a buildup in it that's causing it to discolor. And, and man, it can happen. Not fun, but it does happen. Christian Becerra, thank you for your videos. Look, we love this stuff. Okay. Aaron Baez says, I worked two years as an apprentice in the local union, 68. They didn't accept four different times, <clears throat> yet I was able to work through them as a probate. I have no felonies and I passed all the required and I passed all the requirements yet. So if you're already, Aaron, does this mean you're already in 68 and I don't know what you mean by you're already in it or you worked in it and they, they didn't accept four different times. Not sure. Wouldn't accept me. I was so heartbreaking. Open shop was so unstable. Still do plumbing on a side. You know, I'd, Keep contacting 68 if, if that's really what you want to do and see if that helps. David Thornton says, been fixing a bunch of frozen water lines here in Central Texas. Man, we have had more of them this year than anything ever that I've seen. Christian Becerra says, hello, went through apprenticeship program, local 62 in Monterey Bay, California. Two years track homes, two years refrigeration, and a year in service now with COVID on to service calls and commercial work. And guys, here's the deal that there's always going to be opportunity, meaning with COVID happening, that, that there's new opportunities doing different things. Take it and learn from it. You will really be good. Roger, going from well pump to county water. Should I put a pressure reducer on the main pipe coming into the house or will it be good? They, they should have a pressure set at something. You may need a PRV. It, it really depends on how high the pressure is and if you think it'll damage your house. Uh, Christian, Basara, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Love your information and vids. Man, this is why we do it. You know, and it says union plumbers take felons. And, and that's true if you're in commercial you still might, may not be able to get a, a plumbing license, but I know here in Texas, you know, the, the good thing is like with a supplemental criminal history form, they'll do a background check and check you out, but it is still possible to get in here. And it says, I know a guy who committed murder and still got accepted in the union. You know, the good thing is, is a pipe fitter and a welder, man, you, you, they don't even know if they do a criminal background check. Do you ever have to thread your own pipe or is that not ideal for what you do? Jeffrey, we, we do it quite often. I've actually got the midget, the, the, the M18 fuel portable pipe threader. Freaking love that thing. Milwaukee makes some great tools that, I mean, just help us do good. Yeah. Please don't take down the, the vid so others can watch. You don't have to keep answering. Y'all, I keep those up all the time. So, and I hope y'all check them out often, like them, and give me a thumbs up. Uh, three tips for getting clients. Number one, use social media. Uh, a good thing is for door flyers, whenever you go out to work on a house, Go to the two houses on each side of it and the five houses across the street. Just a, a, a door hanger that you put on the door that says, hey, we're in your neighborhood. Uh, if you call the office now, you may be able to get your plumbing issue taken care of today. Always a good thing. Another one is happy calls. Follow up with your existing clients. Hey, we were out a few weeks ago. Just wanted to check. We get to where we try and do them every day. Hey, my plumber, Fred, 
just left your house, just want to see, did he do everything right? Did he meet your expectations? Did he make you happy? If you take time to do stuff like that, you'll be fantastic. Take care of Walmart, Target, and Safeway. Nipex tools are the best. You know, I, I've, I've contacted them about sending me some tools, let me play with them and test them and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, checking into it. Mm. <clears throat> what made me want to be a plumber? Uh, I had a friend that <laughs> – a uh, friend that his father and three brothers were in the trades. And when I got into it, I really did love it. Pepsi says, you have one dislike on 155 likes. He's calling that a 155% like to dislike ratio. I love it. Yeah, this is this would have been good. Uh, Vapor AX. I like this. You, you should do an updated video on the CPVC, PVC gluing. Had to do my home myself after the freeze down in Houston. Brother, we, we were down in Houston. Julie was down there last week. She's headed back, I guess not this week, but next. She's headed to Central Texas this week. Man, it, it can be crazy. Chuck Cheese says, how often should I have the main line cleared in my complex with 100 units? Normally, people don't have main lines cleared unless they have a blockage. One thing you might try is if you have blockages often would be hydro jetting to clean it out. Uh, anything at all you can do to make it where you don't have recurring problems is huge. All right. Sorry, trying to read through all the comments, find some good ones to pull up. Here's a good one. Do you do this YouTube channel by yourself or do you get help? I, I get help. I get a lot of help. Uh, I've got four people on my marketing team that, that do a great job. I've got three people that do editing. One of those also does like content research. I've got another one that does social media posting. So, and, and she can actually do some editing too. So, I mean, we've really got, we've got a really good team in there. There you go. Sean, Sean knew it. Says there's a whole team behind Roger, all great people. And then Amber, uh, Amber is my manager. She manages me. She helps me manage the marketing team. Julie manages the plumbing company, the back end of the office there. Amber runs it, but, but Julie manages it. So it manages, it takes so many people doing so many things to make everything work. And this is a good one. Alan says, what square footage house would you suggest one inch or more main water line into the house? It's not the size of the house. It doesn't matter what the square footage is. You want to check bathrooms. How many bathrooms? How many people are going to live in the house? What is your, your, your G max, your guaranteed maximum water flow that you're going to need? Things like that. So that would be the things to check out. Uh, uh, Jake D, the answer is yes. Uh, Roger, thinking of moving from California to Texas, eight years experience, journeyman foreman, are you hiring? Here's what I would do is, is number one, Jake, I would contact the Texas State Board right now because since California doesn't actually have a license, since they work under a construction company or something like that, they're going to want you to prove your hours. And sometimes that can be hard to do, but I would say start now. and it could be it could be huge for you, but yes, we're always hiring, so we're always looking for good plumbers. Ronald Crabtree says, "Hello, Mr. Wakefield. My wife and I love your channel. You have saved us tons. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Uh, look, we do this because we enjoy it. We started making videos to help homeowners communicate better with their plumbers, to communicate better with." the hardware store, if they were going to buy stuff to do it and things like that. So a lot of different reasons, but Ronald, thank you so much that that's why we do what we do. I got one more question here in the forum. I'm going to answer it and then we'll jump back over in here for just a second and then get out of here. Uh, Chris M says, what is the story behind the football on the shelf?
This is a 1974 Cotton Bowl football signed by the Texas Longhorns. And the neat thing about it is this was given to me by a friend of mine. And right up here, which you probably won't be able to see, it's actually signed by Daryl Royal. And I am a huge Longhorn fan. And you know, as many signatures are on here, and I'd have to go back and check. This may have been signed by Nebraska, too. I'd have to go back and see who all was on the 74 team. But I know that Rosie Greer signed this. I've looked and found his signature before. But, you know, th this is just pretty cool. It was given to me by a friend of mine. And, you know, he knew that I was a Longhorn fan. So that's been pretty cool. And then right up behind that, my silver play button for 100,000 subs. That's cool, too. Uh, yeah, hire slow, fire fast. Guys, I am fixing to shut this thing down and get out of here. Uh, it, it's, it's actually past 530. But here's what I'm going to ask all y'all to do, if you would, please. I've got a video coming up at 545, and, and I don't say people's names just because they asked me to. Uh, here, here's what I would tell you is do me a favor at 545, watch the video that comes up, like it, share it, comment on it, do what you can and just kind of see what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm wanting to, to try that just to see if it'll help the al algorithm e anyway. And, and I love seeing this because Jeremy Howell was a fantastic student. Uh, he was one of my students when I taught in the union. And so I love when I see that, look, Roger is a great teacher. I love this industry. I, I love this profession. I think plumbing is one of the greatest trades that there is. We have a wonderful opportunity to help people and, and to do wonderful things. So what I will tell you, Jeremy, is number one, thank you very much. And, and you are a fantastic student. But the cool thing about it is I do this because I love it. So I, I think it's pretty cool. And okay, I, I will fix that link. So thank you very much. Yes, guys, I will see you next time. And Joe Jr., this is a great question also. Uh, do you make more money on YouTube or actually plumbing? Nowadays, I make more money on YouTube. So it's a good problem to have. Uh, anyway, guys, look, I really do appreciate you all being here. I'm going to put this banner back up real quick just because y'all need to jump over to instagram follow me over there because we are going to be doing a giveaway here pretty quick i'm talking with ferguson about that and, and getting some good stuff to give away so if it's something you're interested in definitely jump over there and let me know anyway guys look i hope you've enjoyed this again at 5 45 please watch for the notification. If you hadn't subscribed and ring the bell, do so. So here in about 15 or well, 10 minutes now, you'll receive a notification saying that there's a video, watch it, comment, like, share it, all that. If you would, man, I would really appreciate it. Anyway, thank you very much for being here. I will see y'all again next week. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.